of a lot of unnecessary suffering. But we can also see that when these opportunities come, that they are gifts, that they are actually blessings in disguise, and that source knows that this human is no longer for our highest good, or that this job is no longer serving our soul mission. And if we're not attached, and we are fearless warriors, nothing will frighten us, and nothing will cause us to feel ashamed or feel that something's wrong with us because another rejects us. And it's really important that we all pass through this um, you could call it an initiation. I don't really know that it's that formal, but it's kind of like this alignment. It's like this laser beam of alignment, and we have to embody that, that alignment. And so that takes some practice. That takes some, you know, stepping in a little bit and, ooh, I'm not sure if I'm ready, and we pop back out. But it's really, I had a student in yoga asking me, you know, Tanya, when you talk about alignment, like, what is that? Like, what does that look like to you? And I just jumped up spontaneously and I turned the light on in the yoga studio. And there's these lights above the studio that just shine a light straight down. And I said, this is where most humans spend their time. And I was walking in a circle around the light. And then I told her, this is what I mean when you step into your alignment. And I stepped right in. And it literally is a stepping in. Many humans dance around the circle of alignment for lifetimes. They, they, try, they try to be good. They try to be powerful. They try to be something. And trying is really the absence of being. So we need to stop trying and we need to stop start stepping in and we need to start claiming our alignment and really embodying what we came here to be and what we came here to embody. So when I talk about lackful consciousness and unity consciousness, that is what I'm talking about. Unity consciousness is that laser beam of alignment. When I am in that alignment, I and you are one. I see you and you see me when we're both in there. Now, if I'm in that alignment and you're not and you're dancing around the circle, it doesn't mean that we're not still one. It's just I will be seeing from the eyes of consciousness that shows our oneness and I will have greater compassion and wisdom and understanding of why you are still dancing around the circle. Now, when someone's dancing around and they're in lackful consciousness and they're looking at me standing in alignment, often they can be threatened or jealous or insecure and have all kinds of things come up for them because they are dancing around the light. They're still in the shadow. And when we're in that shadow energy, fear dominates us. And that's what I really want to address today is that uh, as a planet... As a planet full of humans and oh, intelligent, yeah. amazing souls, it is time for us to really wake up and remember who we are. It's time for us to really step into the light fully and to be in alignment with source, to really connect with our one true source. Now, this is not religion I'm talking about. I I don't care what religion any of you follow or if you like to do certain rituals or if you want to go out and dance naked under the moon, I don't really care. That's your thing. But what I'm talking about is alignment is important for all of us. And it's not a religion. It's not a um, some kind of cult following. It's you knowing how to connect with your one true source. So my connection with my one true source of infinite energy and abundance and solution is going to be very vibrational for me. And I often will ac access that consciously in meditation when I'm being still and I'm tuning in to ask source for guidance or I'm tuning in and I'm thanking source for all the abundance that's being provided. And especially when I feel like there's not a lot of abundance around, the most important thing is to get into that alignment vibrationally and feel grateful for everything I have, to feel grateful for all that I've been given, and to be so excited and so eager for what's on its way. And I say this because most of you out there are missing this one simple thing. And there's so I've taught so many workshops on manifestation and laws of attraction. And there's all these amazing techniques and tools that we can use in our magical toolbox um, as far as the positive affirmations and uh, positive visualizations 
and things like that, making a vision board, all of that stuff is really powerful. However, the universe is hearing your call, is hearing and communicating with you, and you are communicating with the universe, whether you know it or not, you are, and you are communicating through your vibration. So if you, for example, are broke as a joke and you have no money in your bank account, you're freaking out and you're just like, oh my God, I don't have enough money. Oh shit. Like I'm freaking out, but there's plenty of abundance and you're saying these affirmations, but in your vibration, you are in complete panic and fear. The universe is hearing your vibration. It is responding to your panic and your fear vibrationally. Now, the reason this is important for you to all get is because any of you that are frustrated and feeling like there's not enough, first of all, know that you are in lackful consciousness. Claim it, realize it, and then be willing, blah, 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 sorry, and be willing to step away from it. So if you're in lackful consciousness and you're in denial, it is not serving you. It's not going to ever serve you to be a victim or to be ignorant to your own misalignment. The most important thing for you and the friends that come into your world that actually shine the light of awareness on you, give them honor and reverence. They are your great friends and allies. They are Man. there to help shine and light the way. And what happens is many of us, we get threatened by these these souls that are powerful and warrior-like that come in and say, oh, do you realize this is what's going on? And have you addressed that? Oh, I don't want to hear that. Boom, slam the door in her face not going to necessarily serve you. And so the messengers that are here, a lot of the healers that are here to be bold and courageous and speak truth, it's really important that we do not take it personal if the door is slammed in our face. Get over it. Like, do not give a crap anymore about what people think of you. You really got to get over it because what people think of you is about them. If they're flattering you today and degrading you tomorrow, it is about them. So the more you are connected with your true source, the more you understand that you are enough. You are all of it. You are the universe. You are as beautiful as every sunset, every beautiful flower that you look at, all the beautiful um, animals in nature that you admire. They are reflections of you. We are one with this universe. We're a part of it. We're a part of the beauty. The miracles we see and that we celebrate, we are that miracle. So we got to stop taking it so seriously when the humans that are out of alignment reject us because they're going to. Like my brother says so perfectly, he said, Tanya, you know what? You just can't worry about haters. He goes, haters are going to oh, hate. Yeah. That's what he told me. And it is so true. And those humans that are in the what he calls hater energy, they're just in a place where they're out of alignment oh, with their source. They are not connecting with their source. They think there's not enough. They're in fear and they are competitive and they are judgmental and they are hating. And so we can get caught up in that and we can be triggered by their energy and then lose our own alignment oh, and allow their misalignment to trigger the same in ourselves. That is a choice. It's not a fun choice, or we can choose higher and we can observe their misalignment, we yeah. can observe their fear, we can shine light of awareness and say, are you aware that you are coming from a place of fear? What is your intention right now? Why are you speaking to me in this way? And they may get really confused oh, and upset yeah. because they're not used to someone doing that. But speak that truth anyways, and don't take their misalignment personally. It's so important for you vibrationally. So on that note, I'm going to pause for a second. Any questions, any comments, Amnon? Well, um, somebody called Ron to say, <laughs> you talk about the one... My number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about the one true source. Yes. For some, it's God. For others, it's Allah. For others, it's Buddha. And others, it's Jesus. Yes. Which is correct. Is my true source, source just whichever one I connect with? Okay, so I'm going to go beyond that. True, The true one true source is the energy and vibration of infinite energy and support. It is what 
brought energy to Christ. It is the energy that channeled the wisdom and consciousness to Buddha. It is the energy that brought assistance and awareness to Gandhi, to Allah, um, our sense of a God. All of it is coming from source. And so the reason I say source, it's just, it's like um, in the movie Avatar when well, it's actually beyond because in Avatar they say Ewa, and I feel like what they were talking about was like Earth Mother, like Mother yeah. Gaia, which is also like a deity. So these energies, these um, gods and goddesses and archangels, these are all beautiful things, but they all come from source. So when we really can remember that we are as beautiful and as powerful and as vibrant and miraculous and magnificent as Christ, and that we are one with that energy, we are as beautiful and as intelligent and as um, perceptive as Gandhi, and that we are one with that energy. The source energy is the infinite life force that flows in and you know some call it like the chi or the the prana it's the life force and it's coming it's a higher intelligence and it comes into us as humans it channels through us that is what i'm talking about when i say source so if you connect in um a level with connecting with jesus and christ or with buddha that's fine if you feel a connection to those humans and how they connected with source go for it however the problem happens when we start to deny others the right to connect in their own way to connect with their own true source and what gets tricky is when humans start thinking that there's a one true god and then they start arguing and fighting over that that is really a waste of our energy and our time, and it's oh, caused countless yes. suffering. It's so many humans yeah, have died yeah. at the at the argument of who is the true God. It's complete ridiculous energy. I would say it's insanity at its finest, and it's not necessary. So when I talk about connecting with the one true source, it doesn't even matter if you believe in a God. You don't have to. It's that you tune in and you feel the vibration and aliveness within yourself, that you know that you are an amazing soul beyond this body, beyond this form, and that you can tune in vibrationally and raise your own vibration and heal your own body. You can tune in vibrationally and assist others in healing because you have that awareness and you have this open portal that allows that life force to flow. Oh, when there's a Reiki bad. healer or an angelic healer, when we're tuning in, I'm just a channel for that source energy to flow. And then I'm tuning yeah. in and listening. There are times where Christ, I've sensed Christ consciousness come in. I've felt and seen Buddha's presence and Kuan Yin and goddess Isis. Like recently I had Isis make a, uh, an appearance and let me know that she was here assisting. So all these energies are beings that are here to assist us. I would call them ascended masters and then there are the archangels, and then there is source or the galactic beings that are even beyond um, the, the angelic beings. There's source energy, and it's coming through all of these beings, and it's bringing us information. It's bringing us understanding. It's helping us find solution. It's intelligence. It's the, the life force of intelligence like Einstein when he was tuning in and finding these mathematical theories and and solutions and equations they were coming from source yeah, they were coming from right. higher intelligence because he was here on the planet at a time asking the questions asking the question, and yeah. the consciousness was responding with yes, the answer, the yeah, got to ask the so questions. we right. if we could get past this feeling that we have to identify with this like male or female energy of like a god that's outside of us and that we have to be afraid of that god or goddess we will sir we will evolve so quickly as a planet when we really understand that we are what we've been waiting for we are source energy and we just like christ said these things i do you shall do greater he was really serious about that. He was showing us the miracles that were possible, and he was telling us that we would be able to do them as well, and that we were just as worthy. And it wasn't that we needed to start a religion in his name. He never was a part of a religion, if you really look at his life. He was just speaking of what 
uh, of what source was channeling through him or what he called his father. And that was the way he related to it. So he related to it as a father. And then everyone now believes that God is a male energy 